Hey quilters, my name's Kristen with icstarsquilting.com. I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for the modern quilter. If that is something that you're into, you're gonna love, love, love today's video because I have an amazing hack for you. It's gonna change your life when it comes to quilting. So as I read through the questions and the comments that are on my channel on each of my videos that I've shared with you, I gotta tell you one thing that I know for sure is quilters don't like cutting and they don't like binding. But you know what you need to do to make a quilt? You need to cut and you need to bind it, okay, to finish it off. However, I have found this tiny little trick that is going to make binding amazing for you. It's gonna make it so easy. You're going to absolutely love me for this. No, I haven't had the opportunity to figure out how to teach a quilt to bind itself, okay? No, I don't have a magic wand, and no, I don't really know any sewing fairies that can come over to your house and do it for you. But I do know that your standard quilt binding, this right here, this is your standard quilt binding, okay? This is actually a binding spool, quilt binding spool. It is an acrylic template that I got from Quilt Festival. You can get them from Stitch Supply Co. And I'll put the link down in the description box down below. This is your standard quilt binding, okay? It's all wrapped up. I'll go over what this tool is in just a minute, but I wanna say this first, okay? This is your standard quilt binding, except it's not, all right? This is what it looks like. Obviously, it's longer. This is a scrap from one of my previous ones that I just did, but this is what it looks like, except this isn't standard. Can you tell what the difference is? Neither can anybody else. <laughs> this binding is actually three inches wide. See that? Let me show you the pretty side of the fabric. It's three inches wide. Standard quilt binding, whoever wrote the, the quilts Bible and how to do things, is actually two and a half inches wide. And you'll see that most patterns call for two and a half inch binding, okay? When you're cutting your strips and then you're piecing them all together end to end to end, right? It calls for two and a half inch binding. I do my bindings at three inches. You know why? Oh, because it is so much easier. Y'all, it is so much easier to sew on a quilt. So this tool right here that I showed you a few minutes ago, this is called a quilt binding spool. Now I got this at Quilt Market um, last year, year before. I don't know. I got it at Quilt Market. Yes, it is absolutely acrylic that is filled with beautiful confetti glitter. It's so shiny and it's so fun. So this is made by stitchsupplyco.com and I will make sure and leave a link down in the comments so that you can get one of these tools. It just, it's just a winding thing that keeps your, your um, binding from like being knots and, and like all wrapped up on the floor of your sewing room. Okay, so this little thing, yes, it does like flop and unwind as it's sitting on the floor next to my sewing machine, but it doesn't leave a big tangled mess. So let's talk about why you want to use three inch binding instead of the two and a half inch binding and why that extra half inch matters. So I've been doing this for a very long time. And whenever I teach quilting classes, this is one of the things that I say, look, we are going to veer off the path of like normal quilting advice. And we're gonna do something different. You know why? Because it works better and nobody knows the difference, okay? I do have one small thing to say. If you are entering your quilt into a judged competition, check the rules to make sure that you don't get marks off. But for most of the quilts that I make, most of the quilts that other quilters make, they're not going in judged competitions, right? They're going to be used and laid on by the dog. They're going to be used and laid on by all of your loved ones. They're going to be wrapped around the couch and, and hanging off your shoulders on those cold winter nights, right? That's what we make them for, to be used, to be loved. And this is what my binding looks like. This is a quilt that I did quite a long time ago and this binding has held up like well, like I would expect it to actually. It's, I'm not gonna say it's held up well because I wouldn't expect it to hold up not well, but I attach my bindings by machine, okay? So this is what the back of the binding looks like. 
it's your standard quarter inch. It's attached. I attach my bindings to the back first and then I whip it over and I attach it on the front still by machine. Okay. And this is what the front of the binding looks like. So I did use a very contrasting thread right there. You can tell this quilt has been washed many times. It's been worn and used. This is the one that I keep in my office and I use as a lap quilt all the time, or I wrap it around my shoulders to just, um, you know, be cozy, right? It's, it doesn't hold a whole lot of weight or warmth to it, but um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good extra layer and it's very snuggly, right? So knowing what the front of my quilt looks like, you can see why the back of the quilt looks the way that it does. Let's look again at the back of the quilt and you can see, do you see that extra line that is sewn just underneath that binding? Do you see that right there? How it's got that one straight little line that is just about an eighth of an inch down underneath where my binding is? That is the opposite line to the front of my quilt, okay? So that is the bobbin thread right there that goes to the front, right? or yeah, that goes to this one right here on the front, which is the top thread. So in making my binding just a tiny bit wider, right? Not the standard two and a half inches, but the three inch binding and then folding it in half, absolutely everything else is the same steps that you would. I have made things easier on myself, especially when you get to those places where you have a little bit extra bulk in your binding, right? Because you've sewn two pieces together there or things are a little bit awkward in the corner. Check out this corner, guys. Check out this corner. Do you see that perfect mitered corner? Can we zoom in on that a little bit? Isn't that amazing? And now let's look at the back of that same corner. There we go, now it's in focus. Do you see how nice and straight that is? And you even have that nice, perfect mitered corner there. Granted, this quilt has been very used, so it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's not quite as like pointy pointy as it was when I first made it, but the corners on it are perfect. And if you struggle with the corners on your binding, if you struggle with making this nice and straight, or if you actually like to sew your, your binding on the front by machine and then flip it over to the back to do the handwork on the back. I don't know about you, but I just don't have time for handwork in my life, okay? I don't have time for handwork right now. I'm still chasing and carting kids everywhere and I'm working and doing housework and all that. I just don't have time to sit down and hand stitch. And it's not that I don't love it, it's just I don't have time for it and my quilts, you know, I want them to be really nice and done and, um, I, I will be honest that I used to hate the binding process and I'm still kind of fighting that that natural reaction that I had to the binding process but I used to hate it because I've done all of this gorgeous work on the front of this quilt so much work on the front of this quilt and then uh, now it's not done there's still one step left, but like, I feel like I've already climbed a mountain. Like, and you get to the top of that mountain and then you feel like, yes, I'm done. I've done this quilt. And then you look and you go, oh shoot, there's another hill, <laughs> right? There's another hill. Now we have to do the binding. But by making the binding just a little bit wider, I swear your life is gonna get so much easier. And if you don't believe me and you don't wanna test this out on a big giant quilt, Use some of your scrap fabric, make yourself a gorgeous little mug rug or a coaster or whatever you wanna make, a little wall quilt, whatever you wanna make, something holiday, table runner, and try it out for yourself. Then I want you to come back to this video and let me know what you think after you've tried it out, if you're skeptical. Because I know, it doesn't seem like it's much, it's like pennies worth of fabric to do just that little bit extra on your whole piece, right? But it's absolutely easier and it's going to make the binding process way more enjoyable for you in the end. And if you are still like, thanks Kristen, that's a great help, but I still don't know what in the world I'm doing when it comes to binding, I got you, don't worry. I got you, okay? That's what I wanna do. That's what I wanna do on this channel is I want to help quilters feel more confident in their skills, okay? Because if you don't feel confident in it, you're never going to get the feeling of accomplishment and like super 
pride when it comes to finishing your quilt. I'm being really, really excited about it and proud of it. And not only just like, thank goodness it's done, but like, look at this gorgeous thing I made. It is so cool. And I am just elated, right? So if you need more help when it comes to binding, I have a full tutorial on binding, okay? It's actually a class that I offer through my website. It's videos that you can watch on demand. So many quilters have asked for this step in the quilting process specifically that I made a very detailed tutorial on it. And I also have included in this some ways to make some extra little bitty twists to the binding that make you, the quilter, look so much more fancier, okay? That little piping edge, you know what I'm talking about? That little flange where you're just like, dang, that is a cool binding. Like, how did that happen? It's so easy. You'll never even, like, it's gonna blow your mind when you see how that is done and how simple it is and how even the most beginner quilter can up the quality and the finished look of your quilt to make them look so professional and like you absolutely know what you're doing when in reality, we're just setting the bar a little bit lower, right? And not like in terms of quality in the finished product, but like setting the bar a little bit lower for how hard it has to be to make something this gorgeous and this amazing as your finished quilt that you are so proud of. So I want you to be able to not be afraid of binding anymore. I want you to not be able to afraid of not be afraid of binding anymore, okay? So with the coupon code that I'm gonna share right here, this is the only place that you're going to see this coupon code ever, by the way. With this coupon code right here, you're gonna be able to get that course for a super good deal. I'm giving it to you half off because you watch this video because you want to do better with your quilting skills and I wanna help you get there, okay? So check out the links in the description box. Use that coupon code right here, right here. Beautiful coupon code right there. And let's make your binding skills look like you are an absolute professional because I believe that quilting should be fun. It does not have to be hard and you get to enjoy every single step of the process to make beautiful things to surround yourself with and design the life that you love. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a wonderful week. Try out that binding tip that I told you about. You're gonna love it. It's, it's gonna change the quilting game for you when it comes to that very last, last step of quilting, okay? I'll talk to you soon. I'm Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com. Have a great week. Bye.